Hello guys, welcome to session two. Last session we discuss about microsporogenesis, right? So here we are going to focusing on the pollen grains or microspores, right? So microspores nothing but they are the male gametophytes. So pollen grains are generally spherical in nature. Pollen grains are generally spherical and they are measuring about 25 to 50 micrometer in diameter. So this pollen grains it is covered by two layers or it is made up of two layers. Outer one is calling as a axine. So inner one is calling as a entine. It is made up of two layers. Outer is called axine. Inner one is called entine. So we will now focus on the outermost layer that is a axine. So axine it is a outer layer and it is a hard layer okay and it is made up of substance called sporopollenin the substance called sporopollenin which is a uh, one of the most resistance organic material so it use protections to pollen grains yes it will give protections to pollen grains against high temperature strong acids alkalis even no enzymes are can't degrade the sporopollenin so that much of the layer will be the resistance okay now we'll focus on the germ pores so we can see in this diagrams okay so outermost layer is exine in tines okay apart from that we also find here germ pores so germ pore means so water mostly are calling as exine and this exine it is not continuously covered to the pollen grain in somewhere the exine layer thickness is less or it may be absent and that part we are calling as a germ pore yes so wherever the exine layer is absent or the it is thickness is less and that point we are calling as a germ pore now what is use of this germ pore means it is a uh, helps in the formation of pollen tubes so the pollen will be emerge from that point so inside material will be come out of that particular point and that is we are calling as a germ pores okay so there are different types of germ pores are there based on the number of presence of germ pore okay if the pollen grains are having only one germ pore that is we are calling as a monocolpate. If germ pores are having the two or germ pores we are calling as a bicolpate. If it is having the three germ pores we are calling as a tricolpate. So it is depends on the number of germ pores. So especially in case of monocot we can find only one germ pore that is we are calling as a monocolpate in case of dicot we can find so it may be bicolpate or it may be the triculpate okay so i'm going to repeat again so pollen grains is it is a spherical in nature measuring about 25 to 15 micrometer so it is made up of or discovered by two layer so outermost hard layer we are calling as exine inner way we are calling as a in time so exine it is a made up of substance called sporopollenin so it is sporopollenin nothing but it is a most resistance organic material it give protections to pollen grains against the high temperatures strong acids alkalis even against the enzymes okay so these pollen grains is covered by outermost layer that is a exine so this exine is there is not continuously covered to the pollen grain somewhere its thickness may be less or it may be absence so that point we are calling as a germ pore so next part is it is a in time so in time we know that it is a innermost layer of the pollen grains right so this pollen grains it is a continuous and it is a thin layer and it is made up of cellulose and pectin. Okay, so we know that the pollen grains is covered by two layers. One is 
so that is exine outermost in in time it is a innermost right so it is a continuous layer and it is made up of cellulose and pectin okay so here so inside the this pollen grains consists of cytoplasm and this cytoplasm is surrounded by the plasma membrane okay so when the pollen grains is mature when the pollen grains is mature it consists of two cells when the pollen grains is mature it consists of two cells so one we are calling as vegetative cell and generative cells okay we can observe in diagrams so vegetative cell and generative cells okay the vegetative cell is bigger so vegetative cell is bigger and it will reserve the abundant food right vegetative cell, vegetative cell is it is a large and it is irregular in shape okay and it will reserve the food materials so there are two cells are present inside the pollen grains one is called vegetative cell and one is called generative cell so vegetative cell is bigger and it will reserve the food material so here the nucleus is it is a irregular in shape in case of vegetative cell okay next one is generative cell generative cell is small and it is found inside the vegetative means because of because so vegetative is major of a portion is occupied by the vegetative cell so because of that so this generative cell is it is found inside the generative or it is a small and it is a floats inside the cytoplasm of vegetative cell and it is a spindle shape so vegetative cell is don't have proper shape to the nucleus here generative cell have the proper shape that is we calling as a spindle shapes okay so next line so over 60% of angiosperms over 60% of angiosperms pollen grains are shed at two cell stage so here so really 60% of angiosperms are in active tundra pollen grains or the pollen tubes produce aktiti yavagiddaga ered cell stage iddaga produce aktiti in 60% or the 60% alli enakti tundra pollen grains so pollen tube produce martaiti adara ered cells irtav right it will shed at two cells ered cell iddaga the pollen tubes will be produced okay but in remaining species the generative cells divides or the before pollen tubes produce are going to change so inside the pollen grains only actively so it will undergo mitotic division by generative cell and it give rise to two male gametes the ard male gametes are produce martiti produce madid mele right after that it will shed out okay so one more diagram here now we note both one more diagram is there so kelavond 60% of cell in actively so it is shed at the time of two cell in some cases what happens it is shed at a, at the three cell stages okay so then what happens in 60% of angiosperm means so it is shed at, at the stage of two cell so in one cell yava aktathana when it is in it is divided in the it is divided in the golden tubes okay so i am going to repeat again so innermost layer we are calling as in time it is made up of what it is made up of cellulose and pectin okay pollen grain consists of how many cells two cell one is vegetative cells and one is it is a generative cells okay vegetative cells it is reserve the food materials so generative cells carrying the major gametes or we are calling as sperms right so in 60% of angiosperms it is shed at the to cell stage so remaining one cell will be get divided in the pollen tube but in some cases what happen all three cells are get divided in the pollen grains only after that it is get shed out okay so next concept that is a pollen viability so viability means we can refer as it is a work successfully ability to survive or live successfully okay so here pollen ability means 
pollen grains retain the ability to germinate pollen grains retain the ability to germinate okay it can be germinate within the short uh, short term of period or it may long term of period okay germination may be begun almost immediately germination begun almost immediately after the pollination in case of sugarcane or sorghum so it will take 30 minutes so within the 30 minutes that pollen grains will be the get germinated so in some other plant it may take several hours in some plant it may take several days for example like fabaceae and like solanaceae it will take more days okay so next one is it is a uses of pollen yes, no? so what are the uses of pollen grains right so the pollen grains it help in protect and transport dna so nothing but genetic material so it will transfer the genetic material from male gamete to yes site of fertilization or it is fuses with the female gamete so it help in protect and transport the genetic material so pollen grains of certain plants are highly nutritious yes pollen grains of certain plants are highly nutritious so it is used as a food supplement in the form of tablets and syrups it is used as in the form of tablets and syrups and most of the insects its food will be the pollen grains okay now i focus on effect of pollen grains pollen grains cause the air pollution pollen grains it cause the allergic disease and bronchial disease in some people next one that is a gynoecium or also calling as pistil so pistil it is a female reproductive part of the flower and it is a innermost oral of the flower so pistil is composed of one or more carpels so we also calling as megasporophylls right so pistil may consist of one carpel or two carpels or more than that if the pistil consists of one carpel we are calling as a monocarpellary if it is a two carpels we are calling as bicarpellary if it is a consist of tri or three carpels we are calling as tri carpellary so it consists of more than that we are calling as a multi carpellary right so this carpels either may be free or it may be fuse if it is a free we are calling as apocarpus if the carpels are free that is we are calling as apocarpus if the carpels are fused together we are calling as a syncarpus right so each carpel each carpel it consists of three parts each carpel consists of three parts ovary style and stigma okay ovary the ovary is a swollen basal part of pistil so so there is a swollen part so that part we are calling as a ovary so inside the ovary it consists of cavity that is we are calling as a locules it consists of cavity we are calling as locules so in that locus we are meant to calling as a placentation where we can find the attachment of the ovule right so next one is it is a style so it is a elongated slender part so it will provide the passage entry of pollen tube into the ovule or into the ovary so last one is it is a stigma so stigma it is a serve as platform it is serve as landing platform for pollen grain though the shape of stigma may be varies it may be flattened it may be branch knob like etc okay so here the diagrams are shown here okay
okay so first one a one he see we can see here so it is a pentacarpellary means five carpels are there and these five carpels are they are fused condition that is the fused condition that is we are calling as syncarpes pentacarpellary so next one we can see diagram b so it represents the yes it is a syncarpes condition but it is a it is a multi carpellary we can expect more than five carpels okay next one diagram so we can observe that here the carpels are present okay and these carpels are they are free condition it is calling as a yes we calling as apo carpus okay after that in next diagram we can observe that it is a structure of oul so this is we going to discuss in further detail in next sessions okay so thank you guys